Hello and welcome to episode 7 of the Java REST tutorial series. In this episode we will be looking at put and delete. Then I will be doing a short discussion on why I do not cover security. And lastly, since this is going to be the last episode in the series, I threw in some extras for you to figure out on your own. The put method is used to update existing data. An example of this would be updating a record in a database table. There are some people that also implement an insert with their put method. So basically if there's no record to update, it will do an insert instead. Whether or not you want to do this is up to you, but just keep in mind if you want to keep things simple, that's probably not something you want to do. At this point in the tutorial series, I'm not going to be copying and pasting any more code. I'm really not going to be uh, introducing many new concepts. So right now I have the readme file pulled up, which if you look under web contents, uh, readme.html, this is the file that will pull up. It's a nice summary of everything that we have covered. And if you scroll down, as you can see, I already have episode 7 planned out. So let's go ahead and click on the link and go to the web form. Just to let you know, um, all of the HTML pages in JavaScript needed to make this work it's already in the web contents folder and therefore it's already up on github so if you need to actually look at the javascript and html you can just look in github and all of it will be here so the update is pretty simple we have this nice little table that gets uh, produced we can hit the update button we can change the number to say seven we hit submit and you'll notice that the table in the database has been updated with seven so let's go ahead and take a look at what we need to do to make this code work. So within inventory, we're going to go to v3 underscore inventory. And this is the method that we have created, which is the put method. So there's not too much changes that you have to make in order to make this work. As you can see, our path param, we're going to bring in brand and item number from our URL. We're going to use the put method, which is one of the changes. The consume and produce, we haven't changed anything there. So to bring in brand, we're going to use the path param annotation to bring in brand and item number as an integer. And we're also going to go ahead and bring in the body of the HTTP request because there's going to be some data that gets sent up in the body. We're going to declare our variables and instantiate some of them. And then we're going to use the JSON object to parse the HTTP body which we called incoming data. And from there we're going to use opt int to look for these specific keys and if there is no key uh, that, uh, that we've parsed, in other words if this key doesn't exist we're going to go ahead and use zero as the default. From there uh, we've created a new method inside youtube.dao so let's go ahead and open this up and again this is very simple it's a very simple method in which we go ahead and create a prepared statement and then we have some SQL we're going to go ahead and parameterize it because that's uh, basically a safety rule that we always have to do and if everything is okay we'll return a 200 if uh, something goes wrong we'll return a 500 basically HTTP uh, uh, status numbers so if it's a 200, what we're going to go ahead and do, we're just going to go ahead and return a 200 saying everything was successful. And then we'll return that. If it fails, then uh, we'll return a 500 and then give a, an, error, an error. If you're having difficulties understanding how this parsing works up here, go ahead and uncomment these little uh, printouts and it'll help you better understand what's going on right here. So basically this printout will tell you what's coming up uh, both in the body and also in the URL and then you can see how this parse works and where these keys are coming from. The delete method is exactly as it sounds. It's usually there to help you remove data. Now the delete method is also the most dangerous resource to implement so I would think long and hard before implementing it. You might want to have an archive solution that's easy to restore data or just make the data invisible. The reason why I say this is because RESTful services are so easy to access. Uh, malicious hackers or just inadvertent web crawling from some sort of client could easily wipe out a database. So it's something to think about before implementing a delete resource. 
So let's take a look at a demo of the delete method. So we click on this link and here is all of the items within our database table that we pulled back. Now these last three rows are formatted incorrectly and I'm going to go ahead and delete them by using the delete button right here. And as you can see as I click on them and as they get deleted I get this message saying item was deleted successfully. So let's go ahead and take a look at the code. Again we're still in v3 underscore inventory and here is the delete method. Now the first thing I want you to notice is that our URL path is bringing in brand and item number again which is the exact URL path we were using for our update method. And what I'm showing here is that for every unique URL path you can have all five methods associated and it will go to the right method uh, when you make your Ajax call. So let's go ahead and continue on. Uh, here is the delete annotation. Uh, we haven't changed anything for our consume and produced and we're doing the exact same thing. We're bringing in brand and item number we're also bringing in the body of the HTTP request. Down here again, you'll notice we're doing the same thing. We're using JSON object to parse it, and we're looking for a key of PC underscore parts underscore BK, which is basically primary key. And if that key doesn't exist, we're going to go ahead and default to a zero. Then we're going to go ahead and call this DAO uh, method, which we have written in YouTube underscore DAO. And again, this is a very, very simple uh, SQL uh, statement that allows us to delete from our table. And again, going back to what I said before, if you're going to implement a true delete, make sure that you have some sort of backup. For some reason, it's just way easier for us to understand uh, corrupt data if we have something to work with. When there's actually no data to work with, it's actually significantly harder to try to restore data. So if you're going to implement a true delete, ensure you have a very good backup plan to go along with it. Moving back, uh, if it's a 200, we're going to say item was deleted successfully, which you've already seen printed on the screen. And if there's some sort of error, we'll return 500 and to tell them that uh, the request was not uh, able to complete successfully. If you have made it this far, congratulations, you have completed the series. I believe this is a good foundation to help you create your first RESTful service. It is by no means complete, but I have every confidence in the world that you will be able to figure out the rest by yourself. Again, just a reminder that all of the code that uh, I have demoed through the seven episodes is all up on GitHub. So if you go under the web contents folders, here are all the HTML files, and here's all of the JavaScript and you can easily download this and take a look at all of the code for yourself. Under the SRC folder is where all of the Java is and you're gonna have to dig down a little bit but eventually you'll be able to see all of the Java code here. And to the people that have given me a star thank you very much that is greatly appreciated. I always love trying to get this as high as I can but again all of the code is here and you're welcome to it. So let's take a moment and talk about security and why I don't cover it. I know there are some of you that have asked me directly on whether or not I was going to cover this subject. And the reason why I do not cover this is because I am not an expert in it. I do not have any certifications making me a security expert. Does that mean I have never implemented security? Yes, I have implemented security, but I'm working directly with somebody that is an expert in security, and he audits my code and the application to ensure that it is working within the parameters that it needs to work in. So while I am no expert, I work with somebody that is an expert, and that is my advice to you, is that if you need to work or if you need to implement security, then you need to work with somebody that is an expert in security. Do you really want to take advice from a guy on the internet? Because think of the risk that you are accepting. If something is flawed, and if that causes a security problem, are you really going to tell your boss that the reason why there's a flaw is because you took advice from a guy on the internet on how to implement security and put whatever data whatever confidence uh, your users put in you at risk. If you look at the news, there are major corporations that get broken into, and these are ones that we think are the best in the world. 
but yet they get broken in too. So my advice to you is if you always want a job, go ahead and get your certifications to security. It only gets more dangerous out there and really never gets less dangerous. It's a great skill set to have if you're willing to go ahead and train for it. Okay, so I'm going to cover the last thing for this entire tutorial series. And that is I've put in three extra bonuses into the code. It's, all, it's also already up on GitHub. So the first thing I've done is I've put in a method in which you can parse the HTTP header that comes up when you get a request. So if you click on this link, you'll notice that I am printing out what kind of browser you are using. So if we go ahead and go into the code and go into parse HTTP header, what you'll see is uh, I define this uh, HTTP servlet request and through this code I'm able to parse it out. What I would recommend you do is uh, just go ahead and uncomment all of the printouts to see what it's doing and go ahead and try to figure it out for yourself. The next thing I've done, hit the back button, is I've implemented a JSONP resource. So if we go to v4 underscore inventory you'll see an example of a JSONP resource. And if you don't know what JSONP is, don't worry about it. When you run into the need for JSONP, you'll know right away. This is a cross-domain data access issue. And once you run into it and you start researching it, everything will point you to JSONP. So just don't worry about it until you actually run into that issue. The last thing that I've put in is an HTTP client. So uh, uh, under utilities, what I've done is I've created an HTTP client. And what this basically does, it is allows you to call another RESTful service or a website. It's basically a client uh, in your RESTful service that can make HTTP requests. So you're able to make calls to other services that you might need data from. And really those are the, uh, the extras that I've put in there. And I hope you have time to tinker with them and figure them out for yourself. And this is it. This is the last one of the series. Thank you so much for your time. And to my subscribers, thank you for your support.